Some time ago, I made a video covering what might occur during a hypothetical Second American Civil War, and though most models we covered ended in a stalemate or Republican victory, the outcome of the 2020 election and the Republican response to that has put into perspective some major new factors, foremost being a very high threshold for violent action to actually be taken by the right, a very deceptive illusion of unity, and an overestimation by the right of their own superior position. If a new civil war were to break out in the US within the next few years, it seems quite possible the Republican or right-wing faction would lose badly, and given present trends only fare worse the further into the future we go. Here is why that might be the case. Let's look at January 6th and the storming of the Capitol, what has become the most radical action collectively taken by the modern right. The events of this and the following days told us a lot about the nature of right-wing American action and operation. We didn't see in the build-up to this event an organic solidarity and agreement on what to do or how to do it. The pretense of this incident, the outcome of the November election, saw a myriad of reactions from the right until President Trump personally challenged the outcome and gave his definitive narrative on what had happened. This precise point is analogous for a faction leader giving his followers a status report and command. In this case, the report and command was that the election had been stolen, we need to work to expose this and demonstrate solidarity as the winning majority. Despite that, we saw great division on what aspects of the election to challenge, from the integrity of the machines, to issues with mail-in voting, and irregularities at various election sites, overall complicating and possibly even sabotaging Trump's challenge. Whenever Trump didn't deliver a clear message, the right fragmented into several sometimes opposing factions, all attempting to grab at the same goal by different means, breaking up right-wing resources which together might have made a difference into a dozen fruitless efforts. The mail-in voting was a dead end. Let's challenge the machines instead. That's taking too long, but Texas will challenge the vote. That didn't go through, but it's okay because Mike Pence will just throw the votes out, right? Let's trust the plan. Trump will cross the Rubicon and Biden will never become president. Incremental doses of fruitless and pacifying hope that went nowhere. Unity was briefly achieved when Trump called on his supporters to amass in Washington, D.C. on the date of the vote counting as a show of American solidarity with the Trump administration, hopefully inspiring Republican politicians to stand with the president. The turnout was phenomenal and truly speaks to the cohesion the right can achieve under the direct guidance of a proper leader like Trump instead of a faceless and multifactional entity like the Republican Party or some fringe ideology with various competing leader figures. Even right-wingers who didn't support Trump or didn't believe the election was stolen attended the gathering simply being drawn to this massive collective with whom they shared some common ground because, frankly, this level of unity on the right was far out of the ordinary. No other politician in America today could have brought out a right-wing crowd in the same fashion Trump had. This cohesion, however, once again fell apart as soon as Trump left, telling them before his departure to peacefully and patriotically make their way to the front of the Capitol to make their voices heard while the vote counting was going on. Trump's words were very clear, but likely misinterpreted by a handful of radicals in the crowd or exploited by a small number of potential anti-Trump agitators, though this latter group was likely insignificant to the overall outcome. That outcome being that the gates of the Capitol were breached, some by force, others apparently opened by security willingly, and then again, Nothing. There was no plan, at very least not a plan shared among a large enough number of those who made it inside the building. It was just an emotional freak reaction with little real drive to accomplish anything, and what momentum it did have was rapidly swiped away when President Trump declared to his followers that they need to stand down and return home. Once again, a majority seemingly did, following the leader. Eventually, the entire protest was dispersed. Take a broader look at right-wing violence in America and you see a significant lack of planning and organization. The vast majority of what has been designated right-wing terrorist attacks in the last three decades have been carried out by lone individuals, while hardly a handful of mass civil unrest during the same period have involved right-wing ideals at all. Once again, signaling a great lack of cohesion and an overall unwillingness to engage in violence. In contrast, this time frame from 1990 to present day has seen a massive rise in left-wing and social justice-based unrest and action the majority of which have led to significant property damage, injuries, and even deaths, including the still ongoing left-wing-led race riots which began in 2020 and have caused an excess of $2 billion in damage, over 20 fatalities, and hundreds of injuries. As I mentioned in the Civil War video, the right is less likely to initiate this hypothetical conflict than the left, however, at this point it seems the right is less likely to even capably put up a fight unless war were to be openly declared, definitive battle lines be drawn, and a commander clearly named, which, going back to the terminology of our original video, would place the right in a huge disadvantage on a civilian-level conflict, and I know the argument, but we have all the guns, and we'll get to that momentarily, but even at a state and national-level conflict, you have a bigger issue. 
At these higher stages of war, you'd assume the Republican politicians would step up and assume command to defend their faction and values from the hostile states in question. But again we see that, with the exception of a handful of politicians, that's not the case, and in all likelihood the majority of Republican states would bend to the whim of the Democrats if they control the federal government, or simply remain neutral while the few states in opposition are wiped out. Because once again the right lacks unity and a taste for action. We could argue the psychology of why, and I've heard conservatives argue, well, we have jobs to keep, families to feed, we can't afford to stick our necks out like the left does. And certainly conservatives are treated with far less leniency than their opposition on various avenues. But that's just the hand you're playing against, and however you slice it, the facts are clear enough. In planning, cohesion, and boldness, the American right is weaker than the American left. But what about our guns? We have so many guns. The left is afraid of them, there's no way they can compete. That might be the case for now, but it's quickly changing. Despite my political orientation, I know more folks who are on the far left than are even moderately conservative. I am from the city after all. And the hardcore Antifa BLM types are very aware of where they stand on firepower. It won't be long before firearm ownership evens out between the political factions, and this one advantage all conservatives cling to disappears. Oh, but the military will support us, they're majority right wing. Yeah, the rank and file soldiers maybe, but these guys are just like you, they're following their leaders, who day by day are proving to be less and less conservative. Acceptance of things like critical race training and the like should tell you that the top military brass won't stand against a left controlled government, in all likelihood it prefers it to the alternative. Further, with the ideological vetting that went on of the National Guard prior to the inauguration and left-wing ideology being imposed upon the armed forces, how long will it be before the common soldier too is squarely in the left-wing court? Well, they're all concentrated in cities, you might say. Sure, but cities are densely populated and they expand. This is another one of those advantages that's going to disappear gradually as the years go by. And I'd say I was mistaken in the original Civil War video by saying a second American Civil War would be unlike the Civil Wars before it, because the more we consider these factors, the more American Civil War Part 2 looks like the Russian Civil War. With a handful of well-coordinated, population-heavy cities of violent and armed partisans who will quickly overwhelm the divided, hesitant, and sparsely occupied conservative territories that surround them. Sure, the right-wingers will come together and form a mostly united front once things get bad enough, much like had occurred in Russia, but once they get too comfortable or too confident, they'll be at each other's necks again, all arguing about which right-wing ideology is going to lead before the war has even been won. Everybody today who thinks their specific ideology of right-wing is the only solution, and the ideology that's ultimately going to beat the left either politically or once a war breaks out. But they're wrong. If a second American Civil War were to break out, the only thing that might lead the Republicans to victory under current and projected circumstances is a leader who can rally a majority of support from the various right-wing factions as well as President Trump has. And the reality is plainly this. No American except Trump presently has that level of support. Trump is not a military leader, at least he doesn't appear to be, and if he was intent on leading the right to victory through means of war, he would have demonstrated that on January 6th when in fact he demonstrated the opposite. For those reasons, the American right has little chance of winning a second civil war. However, while Trump is not a military commander, he is a very effective politician, who could lead the American right to new political victories, but as in the Civil War scenario, that could only be achieved when the right realizes it's on the losing side, puts aside its ideological squabbles, rallies entirely or at least majorly behind Trump on what common ground they might share, and directs their efforts with a pinpoint focus. That means shutting out conspiracy theories, ceasing to imagine Trump as a tool for your own political agenda, and realize that there really is no other choice for the right wing if they want lasting results. The US of Z thanks you for watching. Support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z, out.